Today I'm going to be showing you all how to make fall off the bone oven baked barbecue ribs right at home for Christmas. All right, so to start, I have my rack of ribs here lined on some parchment paper and some foil. These two bad boys are going to help us seal and lock in all the juices in the rib. But before I season, you want to just take some paper towels and pat them dry to remove any excess liquid. Turn them over, same thing on this side. He's been washed already. For your season, you wanna just remove any of this excess blood. All right, so a good tip when marinating and seasoning any type of meat is to start with oil. Why? Because it helps to open up the pores of the meat to take in all your seasonings and flavorings. So today I'm gonna to be using mustard oil for the added flavor of the mustard. In any type of red meat, where the flavors are much more pronounced as opposed to poultry. It's always good to help balance out those flavors with equally intense and pungent and robust flavors. Yeah, so you wanna get your boy well moistened up, flip him over and repeat process. Using liberal amounts, liberal amounts, because you want your seasonings and your spices and flavorings to really penetrate the meat. Right, so the first thing I'm gonna start with is the most important seasoning of all, salt. And today I'm using Goya sea salt. Why sea salt? Because the granules are bigger than table salt or iodized salt, and sea salt is a lot more saltier than regular table salt. So as I said, you wanna liberally season Next, I'm going in with some Goya all-purpose seasoning. And then some all-purpose seasoning with pepper. Next, I'm adding in some all-purpose seasoning with cumin just to help add some more depth and complexity to our ribs. Right, then I'm going in with something that isn't very um, prevalent in savory foods. And I'm not sure why I'm adding in some cinnamon. This one is a sleeper. You need to try this in food. And then to help caramelize and help balance all the flavors, I'm going in with some brown sugar. All right, and I'm taking my two hands and I'm pressing in, pressing in and rubbing it in. You wanna get it into all the nook and crannies. All right, once it's all rubbed in on one side, I'm gonna flip them over and repeat the process. Once I'm finished seasoning here, I'll flip him back over again and then show you how I seal up our bad boy before he goes in the oven. Right, so now that our bad boy is all seasoned up, we're gonna seal him. Now the big reason for this is we do not want to lose any of that moisture and flavor from our well-seasoned rack of ribs. So we wanna seal him up tight, folding both sides, just like if you're making pasta, fold him up both sides, right, so what are we going to do with this boy, we're going to put him on a baking sheet, um, our oven has been preheated to 350 degrees, and we're going to bake it like this for one hour, and after the hour, we're going to open him up and uh, bake him for a half an hour again, and then add in some of the barbecue sauce that we're gonna be making while he's baking. We're gonna add that directly onto our ribs and put it back in the oven for 30 more minutes. So while our ribs are in the oven, we're gonna go ahead and get started on the sauce. So here I have a medium sized saucepan heated over medium to high heat. I'm starting with some mustard oil. Right, so once our mustard oil is heated, we're going in with some Guava jam and then some pineapple juice. So I want to break this down and get this heated. So I'm using the guava jam and pineapple for a few reasons. One, fruits tend to pair well with pork. They both add sweetness to the sauce and by extension the ribs. Guava has a lot of complex, rich, deep flavors that will pair well with like the mustard oil and the seasonings and the brown sugar. Both the pineapple and guava are both slightly acidic, so they 
They offer a lot to the sauce. Very complex, diverse flavor profiles. As soon as you start to get little bubbles around the edges, what I want to do now is go in with some water. Give it a good mix to fully incorporate. And I'm going to cover and allow my water to come up to a boil. All right, so as you could see here, our mixture is boiling. So that's our cue to add our white sugar, fatted sweet sweetness, brown sugar. Same thing for sweetness, but again, help to add more depth and complexity to the sauce, to the molasses and caramelization. We're going in with some ketchup as our barbecue sauce base. So we're just gonna continue to mix this until all our ingredients are fully incorporated, our sugars have dissolved. I'm doing this over high heat because I also wanna thicken the sauce. All right, so now that our ingredients are more or less incorporated, now it's time to continue to build on flavors. So we're going in with some sea salt. Again, you know, salt like most, just to help elevate all the flavors. And then we're going in with the all-purpose seasonings, the all-purpose seasoning with pepper, the Goya all-purpose seasoning with cumin. Now you know Goya has a saying, if it's Goya, it's good. I'm gonna cover the sauce and bring it to a simmer. One simmering, I'm gonna allow that to cook and slowly thicken up for about 10 minutes or so before we add in our remaining ingredients. Here I'm adding unsalted butter. This helps to give the sauce a velvety, silky texture and uh, overall shine. And then I'm going in with some freshly sliced sive and shadow benny. This will help with the overall aroma of the sauce. So I'm just gonna mix this in until our butter has melted and fully incorporated in the sauce. And I'm gonna continue to let this cook under low heat covered stirring periodically for about 30 minutes again during that time we're gonna um, check in on our ribs because the first hour of baking should be finished and after the first hour is when we add in the sauce all right so one hour has passed for our ribs so we're just gonna take them out of the oven open them up all right so you see all that liquid has the natural juices in the pork. So that's what we do. That's why we seal them up. We don't want to lose any of that. So what we're going to do now, I'm just going to ladle some of the barbecue sauce directly over our pork. This will help give the pork a little color. Also help add added flavor to our ribs. So just as we did earlier, we're just gonna fold, fold our foil back together as best as we could. Because you know now it's hot. Locking all the flavors. Right. He is gonna go back in the oven for half an hour. And then after the 30 minutes, we're gonna take him out and uh, open him up and then place him back into the oven so that he can get some more added color and help caramelize the sauce. Check our ribs. It's been in the oven for a total of an hour and a half now. So now what we wanna do is allow it to develop some color. I'm gonna use my fork here, cause as I said, this is extremely hot. Right, so back in the oven he goes for 30 minutes. All right, so our ribs supposed to be finished. Let's check it. Wow, look at that color. So what we're gonna do now, we're just gonna let this cool for about a half an hour to allow the ribs to reabsorb any moisture that may have escaped and let the meat rest and relax itself 
before we slice and taste. All right, so our ribs are cool, so it's time to cut now. Watch how easy the knife is running through, like butter. If I could just come in and see how oh, nice and tender, not too dry. Perfectly cooked ribs. Let me show you just how tender it is. Try it breaking up. Fall apart. They will need to use my knife. Mm, let's give it a taste here one time. Mm, mm, mm. 